Our second prize today is the Halifax Overseas, uh, Overseas Club Essay Prize. Um, the award was established in 1920 uh, through a resolution passed by the executive of the Nova Scotia Overseas League. Uh, papers can be either historical or critical in nature, but they must speak to matters that stimulate the study of and interest in uh, the closer relations of the constituent parts of the British Commonwealth. Competition is open to all full-time FAST undergraduate students in this case. This year's recipient is Aman Kazmi, a fourth-year undergraduate student majoring in history with a minor in religious studies. His paper is entitled Secular Pretensions communal aspirations. And once again, uh, Dr. Uh, Parasaram from IDS in History uh, wanted me to extend his warmest congratulations, Amon, for, uh, for your excellent work. In his comments, in support of your submission, uh, Ajay writes, Amon's paper addresses very directly the historical and ongoing implications of the British presence in South Asia and the implications of British demographic counting and state building for historically rendering Muslims as constructed, foreign, and invading other in the hotbed of anti-colonial, romantical nationalism. Amman has shown considerable intellectual growth, he goes on to point out, in, uh, considerable intellectual growth and maturity over the two years that, I've, that I have had the pleasure of being his professor. I also wanted to thank the, uh, these are my words, I also wanted to thank the uh, selection committee, Dr. Uh, Chris Austin of Religious Studies, who's here today, and Dr. John Cameron of International Development Studies for serving on the committee. Thank you very much for your help. Dr. Austin commented that, quote, Aman's paper treats one of the most pressingly important issues in contemporary India, the emergence of deeply communalized religio-political powers at the state and federal levels within a nation which presents itself to the world as secular, democratic, and affirmative of religious plur pl pl plurality uh, in hands-off terms. In this short paper, Aman sums up eloquently an enormously complex set of social, political, religious, and cultural dynamics which normally require full-length monograph treatment. And he does so by balancing an impressive array of sources in a very mature fashion. Uh, congratulations, Amon, for a great, for a great paper. Thank you, Dean Harvey, for that warm welcome. Um, I would also like to extend my thanks to the Nova Scotia Overseas League for their generous donation that has made this essay prize possible. I would also like to thank the Faculty of Arts and Social Sciences for hosting this event and for reading through all our essays. <coughs> the Selection Committee for choosing my essay. And most of all, I'd like to thank Dr. Ajay Parastram for his patient guidance throughout the term. I know that he's not here, but thank you, sir, for believing in me and allowing me the space to explore this topic. My essay traces <clears throat> the duality of communalism and secularism in Indian politics and society. The reason I chose this topic is due to the profound impact it has on shaping the way the world's largest democracy is moving forward in the 21st century. It stems from my own experiences of facing prejudice due to my Muslim identity and is dedicated to all those innocent and unwilling martyrs who have been victims of prejudice and hatred as well as the multitude of Indian Muslims who continue to languish under the oppressive yoke of the state for their identity. 71 years have passed since Nehru's iconic Tryst with Destiny speech delivered from the Mughal Red Fort in 1947, which was broadcast throughout the newly formed Indian Republic declaring it its independence from British rule. Nehru had declared that all of us, to whatever religion we may belong, are equally the children of India with equal rights, privileges, and obligations. We cannot encourage communalism or narrow-mindedness, for no nation can be great whose people are narrow in thought or in action. Unfortunately, independent India seems to have severely failed on both counts and finds itself mired in the throes of communal passion. The Bharatiya Janata Party, under the leadership of A.K.L.K. Advani, 
led the popular mass movement calling for the destruction of the Babri Masjid in 1991. The destruction of the Mughal era mosque allegedly built atop a pre-existing temple purportedly to be the birthplace of Hindu deity Rama by the medieval Mughal emperor Babur plunged the country in the flames of communal violence and hatred <laughs> so bitter that it stands to rival the memory of the carnage wrought by the parti bitter partition in 1947. However, it must be noted that violence against India's Muslim with the tacit backing of the state apparatus has been an ongoing occurrence since partition and predates the BJP. The increasing mainstreaming of communal politics seems to have reached its pinnacle with the Modi wave sweeping the, the 2014 general elections. Since then, an increasingly tense atmosphere seems to have shrouded the region with minority communities, especially the marginalized Muslim community, being targeted by radical groups. The violence against, India's, against Muslims in Modi's India is not a novel phenomenon, as the 1967 Gujarat riots, the 1987 Hashimpura massacre, the 1991 Bombay riots, 2002 Godra carnage, and the 2013 Muzaffarnagar violence are some, other ex some examples among thousands of others where the state has failed the minority community. The various cases of mob lynching in the name of cow protection and slanderous propaganda intended to demonize the community in the form of love jihad allegations and Gharvapasi campaign bear living testimony. Furthermore, pronouncements such as one made by Yogi Adityanath, the Hindu ascetic politician, recently made the chief minister of the most populous state of Uttar, Uttar Pradesh, encouraging Hindu youth to rape even the exhumed remains of Muslim women, portrays the dismal state of affairs. Growing up as a Muslim in northern India, I remember re realizing early on that I was treated with a certain degree of scorn by some of my peers and educators. I remember clearly being told by a classmate that I belonged to Pakistan during a discussion about our native domiciles when I was in grade 2, age 7 or thereabouts. Soon after, this scorn came to be articulated through slurs such as Pakistani, terrorist and katwa, an insult directed towards the Muslim practice of circumcision. In this paper, I take method methodological direction from the work of Anishinaabekwe scholar Lynn, Lynn Gale, particularly in her understanding of heart and head knowledge. Gale describes her Deb Wibbon journey regarding her experiences navigating the, ba the maze of the bureaucratic colonial paradigm of the Canadian state in order to secure the land rights of her Algonquin nation and it served as an inspiration for this paper. A sharing of her heart knowledge, an essential way of knowing for the Algonquin, particularly resonated with my heart and this paper is rooted in my own heart knowledge as well as academic research. What I've realized through my journey is that just as the Canadian state does not have any problem with indigenous people but rather with indigeneity, the Indian state does not have any problem with Muslims but with Muslimness. I use the, I use the word Muslimness rather than Islam as I consider these to be two wholly separate yet related terms. When referring to Muslimness, I refer not just to faith in Islam but a consciousness about the distinct South Asian Muslim cultural identity that has developed through the course of a millennia through the interaction of various groups. India seeks to erase this identity by perpetrating both physical and cultural violence against the community as it represents a hurdle to the homogenizing product project of the modernity it has inherited from the colonial state. This paper seeks to explore the twin forces of communalism and secularism that have dominated Indian political discourse for over a century. It argues that these concepts are endemic to and rooted in the Euro Eurocentric nation system, <laughs> nation state system that was imposed by the colonial state upon the region and readily lapped up and digested by the late post-colonial elite. Moreover, it questions the secularism practiced in India and argues that it has been the imposition of a majoritarian Hindu paradigm garbed in the la language of secularism all along. Thank you.